Now, again, it could look a little bit complicated. It can look a little bit sort of busy, but that's because everything's kind of unorganized. It's all just displaying, especially in the isometric view. So a lot of times what I'll do here is go into my standard view. So control one is my front view and I've got basic dimensions. It's telling me where all these holes are. These basic dimensions indicate that these holes are where they're supposed to be, but it gives me zero tolerance information, just nominal values. And that's good, we need that, but let's go on and let's look at some of the tolerance values. We'll go to my left view, that's control three, and here we start to see some different values. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of interpretation on this. I'm not going to try to you know, give you authoritative uh, interpretations, uh, but this is how I understand them generally. So the first thing you see is a distance offset of plus minus tolerance. That's, you know, not GD and T, but honestly, in this case, I don't need those two to be related. If I wanted to, I could add things like an angular tolerance between them or something like that, but it's not critical. Uh, I feel fine with just using that, that distance right there. This uh, face right here that I picked for datum A, this datum would normally be attached to that face, but right now it's, it's attached to a control frame, which is defining that the face of datum A has a flatness tolerance of two thousandths. Now that's not relative to anything else. It just needs to be flat, okay? That means, let's say I go through and I machine this and I find out that I've messed up somehow, my, my machine, my cutter, something went weird, and this is not a flat face. If I was trying to hit a, a, a size or location tolerance, I may have to scrap the part because I've kind of cut in too far into my tolerance. But in this case, what it's saying is, hey, look, just make sure it's flat and flat within a, a range, right? A planar gap range of two thousands. So I could go in and machine it down a little more, achieve my flatness tolerance, and then this one is happy. Then I may have to adjust some other dimensions elsewhere, but you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot less uh, difficulty with the size. It's more about the shape or the geometric characteristics. This one right here is uh, the cylinder that we have that's gonna mate up to the next part. And it has a size tolerance, but then it also has a much tighter runout tolerance. So runout tolerance says if I was to put this, let's say in a chuck lathe, right, and chuck it up against datum A and datum B, so it was nice and aligned perfectly relative to the part datums, and I was to put a dial indicator, right, on this face, and then I was to slowly spin this part around in the chuck, at no point can it be out of round by more than a thousandth? So that dial indicator cannot move up or down, right? The range needs to stay within a total of a thousandth of an inch. But I have plus or minus five thousand, so ten thousandths total on the overall diameter. Again, let's say I make it to 2.267. Uh, I find out that my roundness is wrong. I go address the issue with my machine. I cut it down another couple thousandths. I'm still within my tolerance, but now I've reached my geometric tolerance of runout as well. Right? These are not common things, but that's kind of an ex hopefully an explanation of what that's doing. And then the last one on this view is these holes. Now the basic dimensions showed where they're at. This one tells you how to drill them or cut them. And then it shows this positional tolerance. The positional tolerance says, you know where they're supposed to be, you need to be there within 20 thousandths. So if you're off in any direction, up, down, left, right, diagonal, whatever, it's gotta be within 20 thousandths of the center of where it was supposed to be. Now that's kind of interesting because that creates a zone that's circular rather than linear or you know rectangular, basically. So that kind of is more accurate in the diagonal than a plus minus tolerance would be. But then we see that it's relative to datum A and datum B, but with a maximum material condition. What this is doing is giving you a bonus tolerance. It's saying that I need these holes to fit the through holes of the next part. And the through holes of the next part are in this 20 thousandths range. And so if we take a look in the book, we have a really simplified version of what a bonus tolerance might look like. And in that part, you have uh, a one component 
that has some bosses that are undersized and spread out too far apart. So both of those values may be outside of their tolerance individually. But if you notice, because they're undersized, even though they're spread too far apart, they actually fit, right? They fit that tolerance zone. So it works. So you can't use calipers, generally speaking, to understand whether or not it's going to fit with a maximum material condition. You need to create a gauge, right? 3D printing gauges is a great way to do that as long as your gauges are accurate enough, uh, you know, to faithfully reproduce the tolerance zone. So that's where you'd want to use something like an SLA or a Mark Forged Industrial uh, to give you some really tight tolerance parts that would allow you to then just say, yep, it fits in, we're good to go. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail than that. That is how you would basically set up your dimension scheme. Uh, one more thing, the values of these tolerances are coming in from the custom properties or the document properties. So if you come down to dim expert and you look at, for example, location dimensions, a distance value is defaulting to a plus or minus five thousandths. A geometric tolerance of run out is defaulting to a one thou tolerance. That's a pretty tight tolerance. Uh, you may want to change that for yours, but these are just starting points. Uh, it's, it's really, this is just an arbitrary uh, set of values.